In the spirit of the Dick of the Week Award, I've decided to not only give it to the officer that I spoke to today, but myself for what he said and for what I said. Now, it was a very uh, informative visit, um, I found out, and I actually did after spending about five or ten minutes being dumbfounded, I said to this young fella, um, well, what do police do if you don't take criminal complaints or anything and you tell everyone to go online, what do you actually do in the community? Well, We'd been getting on well up until this point. This young fella shoots up out of the seat, ruffles himself a bit and says, we're done. <laughs> and it's like, mate, you might be done, but I'm far from done. So cheeky as I am, I turned around and I said to him, look, I, I'm not trying to be flippant. I'm trying to understand you know, how, it, um, if you want to report a crime, how you actually go about it. Because, you know, I'm used to the fact that, you know, anybody could walk into a police station and say, right, here's a crime being committed, and, yeah, they can act on it. Uh, if it's not a federal crime and not in your state, they'd have to refer it on to someone else. But essentially... Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a cheeky question. He did calm down a bit and he sat back down and we had a bit more of a chat. And I said, all right, so um, what about, uh, you know, like uh, I want to speak to the fraud squad. <laughs> all right, that doesn't exist in, well, it does in cyberspace. I can go online and talk to any number of, invisible baskets that may never answer back you know emails I'm talking about where you go the dead letter office so I could you know you can do that but to actually speak to a real person to actually get a police officer to act on a criminal act wow you wouldn't have thought it was that difficult so we do, not only don't have a um, fraud squad in Tasmania but I said, all right, fine, these are federal offences. Um, where can I talk to the feds? Um, we don't even have any feds in, the, in Tasmania. Can you believe that? No feds. They used to have a few stragglers at the airport, but they've pretty much got rid of them because, well, obviously, there's no necessity for them. Now, this copper, he was telling me that I should um, not continue on the line of inquiries that I am. And I looked at him and I said, what? So, if you saw a wrong, you would do nothing? Yeah, yeah, of course I would. And I looked at him. This is a police officer, okay? He's telling me that if he saw a wrong, he would do nothing. This is kind of like, uh, you know, a bit of a, a mind fuck. He's supposed to not actually say that. Even though it might be the case, he's not actually supposed to say that. So he's told me that he would sit back and do nothing if he saw wrong being done. And I said, well, I find that a, a little hard to believe. I said, you're a cop. Isn't that why you got in to being a cop, to right wrongs, and he just gave me a look as if, what? No, it's not about that, is it? It really isn't about righting wrongs. It's about promotional pathways and and uh, careers and, you know, academy life and, oh, look, work life and family. I mean, where is it on here that actually tells you what the police force can actually do for you? Report a crime? 
No, ring up a number. So essentially, after the phone, conver um, phone conversation, the conversation I had today, the only place I think that police actually have is to enforce infringement notices, fine speeding and things like that, because they're certainly not here to stop crimes. You can't even report a crime. I tried today. I tried, really tried. but And then the copper told me, if you see a wrong, ignore it. Do nothing. I, I mean, yes, it's a little bit dumbfounding. So, um, yes, I had to give, I don't know, it's kind of a, a toss-up of, uh, well, the cop probably thought I, I got the Dick of the Week award because of what I said to him. <laughs> And I kind of think he's the Dick of the Week award because he actually was sitting there in a police uniform telling me that if he sees a wrong being done, he would do nothing. And I couldn't report a crime. Uh, we got no feds in Tasmania. <laughs> That's just a bit of a blowout. So, um, you know, I mean, ultimately they can get involved. Uh, I could actually go to the magistrate's court and put in my own specific actions against it. So basically now the police are telling you to bypass them as being the ones that take a criminal complaint, go straight to the court, virtually make your own citizen's complaint about a crime being committed. Because these guys don't want to take any responsibility. They don't want to get involved in crimes. They don't even want you to report it. I went in to report an actual crime. I even spoon-fed them with the crime that had been committed. And it's like, oh, we can't deal with that. So, yeah, my Dick of the Week award goes to myself and to the young copper that said what he said today. So... um have a good laugh because uh, they taught me a lot today. They taught me I can actually achieve far more online. And, uh, yeah, I don't even know why they bother having police stations where people can actually walk in there and try to actually get them to action something. <laughs> oh, you know, if it comes down to they can enforce court orders and things like this. I mean, is that their role, to actually enforce court orders? I would have thought that policing crime would actually be a very important part of the police to stop crime. How long has the police force been, um, well, <laughs> there have been people that have been dressing up pretty much to refer you to go online to make a complaint because they've got no powers to do anything. So I don't know whether it's Dick of the Week, Joke of the Week or uh, Irony of the Week. But then again, it's not anything that any of us really haven't encountered. I mean, look at this young girl here. Seriously, she wouldn't even probably know what it's like to be a parent. And I guarantee you she's out there giving parental advice as was given to her, to tell other people how to be good parents. You know, there is so much of what they do in trying to make us good citizens rather than stopping crimes, taking crime reports. I mean dumbfounding, absolutely dumbfounding. So yes, Dick of the Week goes to me. <laughs> for actually thinking they could do anything and to them for actually not doing anything and for the representative that I spoke to. And an interesting thing too is that I don't take my mobile phone out with me really at all. But I did this day because I needed to ring my daughter afterwards uh, to see whether she was back at the car so I could um, get a lift. So I've got out of the police station 
and I'm trying to look at the time on my phone and wondering how long I've been in there, whether she's there or not. My phone wouldn't work. And as I'm walking away from the police station, I tried it heaps of times. It was completely dead. It would not work. So I get um, probably about, well, it's half a block now away from the police station. And I've moved across the road again. And all of a sudden, when I push the buttons, my phone comes on. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? They clearly have some kind of jammers going on in the police station to actually stop anyone that might... Like, I might have had my phone trying to record what they were saying and they've got suppression stuff that my phone was turned off and it came back on after I was a certain distance away. That's suppression signal of some kind. It completely deadened my phone. It wasn't the fact that I couldn't, you know, bring it up and not ring anything or nothing at work. It was completely off. And I don't turn the phone off. So um, just an interesting thing that these uh, people do not like to be held accountable for what they might say, that you might go into an interview where they hold the recording of it but you can only get a copy of what they'll give you as a recording. And who knows with the way that they can um, use voice technologies these days, they could even claim that recordings that you never made are you and a voice analysis would show it's you because they actually used your voice print to create that uh, auditory uh, whatever they wanted you to say. Just an interesting thing to notice too because um, they don't want to be held accountable so that you have any evidence of that conversation. So that leaves open that only they hold uh, the actual evidence. And if they're not out there policing crimes or even taking reports on crimes, why are they even bothering to worry about what they say. It's not like, you know, old well, granny down the road had a had an argument with a friend next door and you've got to go around and calm them down. I mean, is this your major role in community? Or to walk around the mall and go, oh, you shouldn't be having that cigarette here or you don't have a licence to busk here. Is that what they're really here for? Or are they here to worry about crimes that are committed like burglary, theft, assault, um, rape. Um, I mean, shall we, I mean, we all know what the crimes are. Clearly none of these fresh faces know in the, the police force these days what a cop actually used to do. So yes, it's, it's hard to know whether to give the, the Dick of the Week award to the actual representative of the force or the force itself or um, everybody else forever believing in them. <laughs> I mean, if you've got a petty argument, they'll get involved because they can then flog that off to the civil court because they don't have to get involved. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave it at that. I'll catch you next time.